Hi, I'm Gene Benson. In this short video, we're going to do a quick review of the basics of wake turbulence. And we'll see some tips on how to avoid a dangerous encounter with wake turbulence. This subject is close to my heart because as a young flight instructor, and that was very many years ago, I experienced an encounter with wake turbulence. I was about 3,000 feet above the ground in a Piper Cherokee 140 with a student, and we crossed the path of a very large airplane, and we were rolled 360 degrees. There was no damage to the airplane, neither the student nor myself was injured. But had that encounter happened at a lower altitude, or possibly had we not been rolled the complete 360 degrees, there might have been a very unhappy ending to all that. So let's get on with our brief review of wake turbulence essentials. Everything that flies generates wake turbulence. That includes model airplanes and birds. But general aviation pilots generally need to be concerned only with the wake generated by heavier aircraft. This includes business aviation, regional airline class turboprops and turbojets, many classic warbirds, as well as airliners and military aircraft, and heavy helicopters also produce wake turbulence. Wake turbulence avoidance is an area in which it is easy to become complacent. We are frequently warned caution, wake turbulence, and we don't encounter any problems. But all it takes is once to have a catastrophe. Wake turbulence is generated when high pressure air beneath the wing spills out at the wingtip and rushes to fill in the low pressure area on top of the wing. Remember that the wake is found below, behind, and downwind of the generating airplane. An encounter with the wake of a large airplane or helicopter by a small general aviation airplane will most likely be unrecoverable if it occurs at or near traffic pattern altitude. When taking off behind a large airplane, we must make sure we can become airborne well before the point where the large airplane rotated and then turn away, preferably upwind, before we cross the flight path of the large airplane. Remember that the wake will move with the wind, so it will be moving toward the departure end of the runway. When landing behind a large airplane, we must fly our approach above that of the large airplane and touch down beyond where the large airplane's nose wheel touched down. Caution is required when landing behind a large airplane, even if the large airplane used a different runway. In this case, the large airplane landed on the runway shown on the right, but its wake must be crossed to land straight in on the runway to the left. The wake will travel with the wind. In the absence of wind, the wake will move laterally over the ground at a speed of two or three knots. So there we have the basics. Let's vow to maintain good situational awareness regarding wake turbulence. If we're at a towered airport and the controller issues that warning caution wake turbulence, let's make sure to heed that advice. At a non-towered airport, let's listen up on the frequency and be aware of the possibility of any aircraft that might produce wake turbulence. If there's a good possibility wake turbulence is present, let's make sure we maneuver clear of that area. A low altitude encounter with wake turbulence is probably not recoverable regardless of pilot skill. Let's fly like our lives depend on it. Please check out my website, genebenson.com, and join my mailing list if you haven't already done so. I promise not to fill your inbox. I'll send my monthly safety newsletter, Vectors for Safety, on the first of each month, and on occasion send an update of a notice of an upcoming webinar or safety event. You can also follow me on Twitter. I am at gene underscore Benson. Thanks for watching.